CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust the encoding settings for your cameras that are connected to your security camera Inc. and VR. So first, to get to the encoding settings, I need to hover on the bottom menu, click the menu button, and click the setup button. It's going to prompt me to log into the admin user. And then to get to the encoding settings, I need to go to the record section and then click the encode button. Here are the encoding settings. So here we see the resolution that these cameras are set to, the frame rate that they're using, the video encode type, the bit rate control, the bit rate mode, the bit rate it's set to, the audio settings, and then if I scroll over here, there is also the iframe interval. So to explain what each of these means, the resolution is actually the resolution that your camera is recording video at currently. So here you see I have two 5 megapixel cameras, I have three 4K 8 megapixel cameras, and then this camera happens to be a 4 megapixel or 2K camera. So you could change this resolution if you wanted to. You could lower it for areas where you, you don't need as much detail, and that will help you save storage space. Another way to save storage space is also by reducing the frame rate. So the less frames or pictures that are in the video, the smaller that video file will be. So you could adjust it all the way down to from 1 to 30, or some cameras have a maximum FPS of 15 or 20, such as these 4K cameras. Next is the video encode type. So in here you have H.264, H.265, H.264+, or H.265+. Each one of these will have a different algorithm for how it stores video. For the best compression, you would go for H.265+. However, it might not be the most reliable compression as it may introduce some artifacts as it attempts to reduce the video size. So for the best reliability, we recommend using plain H.265, which is the default setting. Under bitrate control, you can choose CBR, which stands for constant bitrate, or VBR, which stands for variable bitrate. In other words, constant bitrate is a target bitrate that the NVR and camera should aim for when recording video. A variable bitrate will lessen, depending on what's happening in front of the camera, or increase depending on what's happening in front of the camera, and can be, give you some various results. So really you should only use VBR if you know what you're doing. So we recommend using CBR or a constant bitrate. As I mentioned, that does try to follow a target, which would be your bitrate mode and the bitrate that you've selected. So predefined just means that there are suggestions that the NVR has calculated. And these are just default bit rates that you can choose from or if you change it to user defined and hover over the text field, it will give you a range that you can set and define your own bitrate. Again, you should really only do this if you know what a bitrate is and how to choose a custom one or create a custom one. And then for any third party cameras, the only option you have is a user defined option. The NVR will calculate its own suggested bitrate and you can adjust it accordingly as you see fit. Next, we have audio recording. So the check mark means that this camera is recording audio using either its built-in microphone or an external microphone. If you wanted to disable that camera or channel from recording audio, then you would deselect that and then click the apply option. I want to continue recording audio, so I'm going to leave it checked. Last but not least, this is another advanced setting. It's the iframe interval and again, should only be adjusted if you know what you're doing. However, if you don't, it should roughly be double the frame rate. So a frame rate of 30 will equal an iframe interval of 60. Frame rate of 20 will equal an iframe interval of 40. So don't adjust it if you don't know what you're doing. So next would be the substream settings. So these were the mainstream settings. On the substream, this is the stream that you view remotely. Uh, you could change these settings as well. So these cameras are set to a 720p substream. And then my third party camera has a 480p substream. And that'll ultimately affect your remote viewing when you're viewing that substream or if you're viewing your system in a multi-grid view 
like the 16 camera grid view option, then all of these are set to standard definition or the sub stream. I'm going to go back into my encoding settings. Then here we have the mobile stream. So this is, again, when you're using the mobile app, it's going to use this third stream, similar to the sub stream. Some will even downgrade to this third stream or mobile stream. So this is 480p, much like my other camera here. Last but not least, there is more audio settings, some finer tuning for the audio settings that you can select here, such as the output volume, if it has a speaker, an input volume for any of your cameras that have a built-in microphone or an added external microphone. And then you can choose the encoding type. So either G711A or G711U. So those are some of the advanced audio settings that you can set versus just disabling or enabling the audio in your mainstream or substream options. Last but not least is the capture tab. Now capture stands for still frames or pictures if you want your system to automatically take pictures, which is useful for if you want to do a time lapse, say of a construction site or of a project, then you would come in here and select auto capture for the camera that you want to capture it. Then the normal interval, it will follow the interval that you set. So for example, if you wanted to take pictures every minute, every 10 minutes, 30 minutes or an hour or these other settings, then you would choose to do that here. The alarm interval is if you set up any alarm inputs to take a snapshot automatically, then you would set it to whatever interval that you would want your alarm set up to do that for. Then there is the capture schedule. So you would need to enable the capture either through the alarm settings or motion, or if you wanted to do the auto capture using the normal interval on the first tab here. So you'd have to enable these settings and then you would need to schedule it based on how you wanted it to do. So if you enabled the auto capture, then you would want to set a normal recording schedule like so. Or if you wanted it to only cap do captures on motion, then you would of course need to enable that schedule similar to how you would set up a recording schedule that we cover in another video. And that concludes the overview of the encoding settings that are offered on our Security Cameras Inc. NVR systems. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.